All right, so welcome back to Zoography. So, for this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to play Zoography. Now, there are lots of different ways of playing this game. You can play this game like normal, as in, you can play the way I'm gonna teach you how to play, because that's one of the ways you can play this game, is you can play with multiple players, and, you know, see who can build the best zoo, obviously. That's one way to do this. Another way is to actually play this game by yourself. You can play solo, so uh, there's some obviously different rules for solo, so we won't be talking about how to play solo for this video, but in a future video, we will cover that. Then you can also play together as a team. You can do that as well. And so we'll be explaining how to play co-op in a future video as well, because there is a lot more differences going on with the co-op as well. And we might even make a video explaining um, basically the variant for children. There's a variant for children, so if you're playing with children, there's a variant for them uh, that, that makes it easier for them to play. So we'll probably talk about that in a separate video as well. But obviously there's a lot to talk about this game. And there will also be at some point a um, video clarifying all of the different um, city objective cards. City objective cards are basically the way you're going to score points in this game. And so there's a lot of different uh, city objective cards here. Some, of their, some are super easy to understand and some not so much. So in a future video, I will do a video explaining how all of these work and how you're going to score points with them, okay? But Anyways, that means there's a lot of zoography stuff to talk about for future videos. So let's get started explaining how this game works by talking about how to set it up first. Okay, so um, one of the things you'll do is each player is going to get a zoo entrance tile. Okay, so each player will get one of these tiles and they're basically the same, at least uh, these two are anyways, except uh, they're obviously going in, uh, you can, you can, and they're double-sided, so you can play them like this, or you can play them like this in your city, okay? But yes, that's, um, one of the tiles you'll be starting out with. Now, all the tiles you start out with will start in your hand, meaning you won't be playing them until your turn. So you might be starting with a couple of tiles in the game before your first turn even begins, but you won't be building your zoo until you decide to take the action to build your zoo. Okay, and we'll talk about that shortly. But yes, you're going to get this tile here, which is the zoo entrance tile, and then you're also gonna get this tile here. Now, they're a little bit, these are a little bit different. They each have a number on it, so I'm gonna set up for a two-player game, and so that means that player one is gonna get this one, and player two is gonna get this one here. And when you're placing them, obviously they don't, they can be placed like this, like this, and they're even double-sided, okay? So that's another thing to consider. These are going to be double-sided. Same with these, okay? So each player is going to get one of these each to start out with. Another thing each player is going to get is each player is going to get five visitors. You're going to start out with five visitors. Does That does not mean that you can't place more than five visitors in your city, but it does mean that these are the five five zoo visitors you might want to place because at the end of the game for every zoo visitor that you weren't able to place in your city or should i say in your zoo is going to deduct you points so if you weren't able to place very many of your zoo visitors you're going to be losing some points so that is something you definitely want to try to do if possible is place all of them okay so each of every person is going to get five zoo visitors okay then another thing is you're going to find these tiles here there's three of them and they're double-sided this is for the solo variant so you will not be playing with this side here because it says solo on it so if it's green then that's correct okay green is go green is correct so the green side is the one you want and this one goes in the middle and it goes up like this, okay? You'll notice it has, it has a bunch of different numbers on here, and that's because all the animals are gonna be going on here shortly. So another thing that's going to happen besides 
these three here is there's going to be a huge amount of tiles that you're going to be playing with. If you are playing a two-player game, however, you will remove all of the tiles that have the number four on them, and there's quite a few. You'll also remove all of the tiles that have the number three on them as well, as you will not be playing with those tiles. And that is kind of a disappointment for me because the, uh, the reptile house is only in the game that has uh, the, if you're playing at least a three player game. So unfortunately, that's just how it is. But that's how, that's the case with the tiles. Then you're going to place out six tiles. The first tile you place out, you'll place here. Now, whatever animal that may be is going to be going into the reserves. And it's going to be this gazelle here that's going into the reserves. So you put the, this is where the reserves go. You can never have more than five animals in the reserves. So if there's comes to a point where you, you can't place any more animals in the reserves or the reserves can't go here, then the animals in the reserves are just gonna get discarded from the game. Okay, and then the next animals, they will get, they'll get placed out like so. So all these tiles here will get placed out until you have six, okay? Get them all placed out. And then these five are going to go on here. So first we have a zebra, an orange, the orange, these orange animals are the zebras which is pretty funny because zebras can't see the color orange. You'll notice this one here has the number one on it. And so that is where the zebra is going to go. It's gonna go there. And then the corresponding animals will go on the next numbers up. So the giraffe would go on number two if there was no animal on number two, and there isn't. So I'm gonna put it there so you guys can see it better. Um, and then let's see, the Ostrich is going to go on number three, so let me just grab one of them, and let's see, number four is over here, so number four is the elephant, so the elephant is going to go here, takes up a lot of space, but yes, it's going to go there, and then this is indicating a secluded animal, so the secluded animals are actually these animals here, and you can place pretty much whatever one you want to choose is up to you of which one you're going to do. But I would recommend not doing the hippo or the gorilla because there is a tile that indicates the hippo in this game, okay? So obviously you don't want to, uh, you know, put the hippo out in case that tile shows up. And there is a variant in this game that makes the game just a little bit more challenging that basically adds the gorilla to the game. So those two animals you don't, probably shouldn't go with. Besides, there are so many other awesome choices to choose from. And, hmm, I think I'll go with, let's see here. I'll go with the uh, Galapagos tortoise. And we'll put that at number five. Okay, so it's gonna go there and we'll just Put it like that so you guys can see it a little bit better. But yes, that's the, the one I've chosen. Okay, now, the uh, after you've done that, then you will flip these tiles over. So, because after all, we're going to be drafting tiles and animals, and and uh, you're going to want to obviously know which ones to go for. So you'll just kind of flip them over like this. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much the setup there thus far. Okay, so then another thing that you'll do for the setup is you'll play the corresponding zoo you're going to be playing as, the, the type of zoo game you're going to play. I recommend City Zoo first, and then you're going to grab this card here, and you're going to cover up that part there. At the end of the game, you're going to get deducted points based on what's left over, okay? For instance, you'll lose a half a point or half of a star for if you don't have 10 animals. If you have 10 animals and up, you won't get deducted a half of a point or half of a star. But if you have less than 10, you're going to lose a half point or half of a star for every animal that you are under 10. 
So if you're only if you have only nine animals, then you'll only lose a half a point. If you lose two animals, then you're gonna lose a point, and so on. And then and then that's for the solo. So you have to have even more animals for solo. Then we have the unplayed pieces. For every zoo visitor that you do not have in your zoo, you're going to get deducted a half of a, a half of a star, which is a lot. And then for every tile that is outside, or actually for every tile that you have in your hand, so in this game you're going to be taking actions. You may not always necessarily want to play your tiles right away in your zoo, and so you might accidentally end up having a tile you weren't able to place or decided not to place in your zoo, in your hand, left over. And if that's the case, then that's going to deduct a half a point for that as well. So you don't want that to happen, right? And then obviously if you have a monorail piece you weren't able to use, you're going to get deducted a half a point for that too. So that is something to note. Now I'm not going to explain the monorails expansion that adds monorails. They will definitely add more complexity to the more challenging uh, scoring and stuff like that to the game. So we won't be talking talking about monorails right now. But another thing that you will also get a minus point for is for the city zoo. The objective here is to basically build a zoo four by four, meaning tiles four by four. So if this was my zoo here, which wouldn't work because obviously it's all convoluted. But if this was my zoo, and I had one more tile here and here, I'd be safe on this side. But if I had another tile over here, so if I had five tiles in a row in this direction, and the rest were all, you know, threes and fours in that direction, I'm going to lose some points if my zoo is outside of that grid. If I have a zoo, so if I have an extra tile outside of that grid in my zoo, I'm going to be losing points for every tile that's outside, so you're going to want to try to keep it within that grid if you can, and the other zoos that you can play add more complexity to that, making it a little bit more challenging too. So this is why this one's recommended, it's easier to remember 4x4, four four, keep it in 4x4, four four. it's easier to remember that. And so that is um, how this is going to work here, so you're just going to place that aside as well. Then. Another thing you'll do for the setup is there are lots of these uh, city objectives. So you're going to randomly choose them and then starting with the first one, the first one will be always be a three star. So whatever you choose will be the three star and then the next one you choose will cover up this part here and it will be the two star. And then the next one will be two silver stars which will cover up for the fourth one will cover up that one copper star as well meaning you'll be playing with these objectives so these are the five objectives that you would be playing with in the game now this is something important to note it is really hard to score stars in this game and I found trying to go for all of them is almost impossible so in fact the, the one that has the three stars and the one that has the uh, gold yellow stars here the two ones those are hard those are really hard to go for. So I focused on going for the the weaker ones, and that helped out quite a bit. So I wouldn't recommend going for the higher ones, and if you do, then that should be like the only objective you go for, really, because it's really hard to pull these off. Okay, but obviously the the these lower ones will definitely which will score you less points will definitely be easier to accomplish. So that is something to note. You don't want to try to do a jack of all trades. You don't want to try to do everything. Just pick and choose one or two of these objectives that you want to try to shoot for when you are building your zoo, okay? To keep in mind, all right? And that's that's basically the setup of the game, okay? So let's talk about how to play shortly.